those of you who are taking thesis seminar wanted to uh, spend a little bit of time talking about the very last paragraph of your literature review. This is going to be the last paragraph that will serve kind of as a conclusion, but we're going to call this a transitional paragraph because it's going to transition from the theory that you're developing in your, your literature review to your method section, which is now your own study and uh, basically a description of what you do to collect your data and your results. So this transitional paragraph is kind of a bridge between the theory and your actual study. And I want to talk in greater detail about how to uh, develop this paragraph. Even if you're not prepared really to uh, develop it at this point as we're entering into week three of, of the uh, semester, I think it's important to realize the importance of this paragraph, especially since this is where you're going to present your research questions. So just like the transitional paragraph is meant to serve as a bridge between your theory and your practice and your study, the research questions are designed to do the same. They are, they are also there to bridge the theory with your study. In other words, your research, your literature review that you're creating is there to answer your research questions, your main research question. Your own study, of course, is there to also answer your research question. So let's look at an example. I'm just going to take uh, a set of research questions here, and I'm going to go into my paper. Okay, now this is the template, but imagine that you have completed your theory. We're going to go to the very end, the very last paragraph of your literature review, just before the method section. So this will be this will be where your transitional paragraph will go. In fact, in the notes in the template, I describe in greater detail basically what I'm describing here in this video, uh, what to include in this, in this uh, transitional paragraph. All right, so what we want to try to include are the following in this paragraph, in this order. We want to begin by restating and rewording the thesis statement. This is very similar to uh, maybe a, a conclusion paragraph in that we want to remind the reader, again, what the main thesis is of our paper. Then we want to summarize the context of the problem. We mentioned the problem in the introduction. We want to basically, in one sentence, summarize or remind the reader again the context of the problem immediately after our thesis. And then we want to transition into uh, mentioning the research questions. We can also mention at this point, if it's a qualitative study, a quantitative study, and so on, but here we want to introduce our main questions, All right? So again, the transitional paragraph is usually four to five sentences, and it's the first time you mention your study. This is really important not to mention the specifics of your study until you get to the transition. Remember that the theory is set or designed to talk about what others have done and starting in the method or actually starting in the transition, this is where now you introduce your own study in terms of the problem and the actual research questions that you will later investigate. So try to keep this in mind. Uh, let me show you an example of some, uh, some research questions. Now remember the theory, the literature review should try to answer your questions. So we've been talking a lot about trying to think in terms of reasons or why or ways describing how something happens. And the reason for that is because again, many of you, in fact, most of you are doing qualitative research. And so how and why are typically good question words to consider when you're thinking about collecting data like interviews, you're talking and observing different behaviors. You might be doing um, focus groups where you're asking a group of participants, a group of teachers about how they feel about a, something that's related to your objective. But in this example, look at the second question here. How do English language teachers uh, use pop culture to enhance critical literacy? So the idea, if we use this as the basis of our main question, 
then throughout the theory, we need to provide an explanation about how teachers use popular culture to introduce critical literacy, right? So you might even break down this section into two to four ways of how that, how that comes about. So look at the research, look at the articles to see how others have researched how teachers, educators use culture throughout critical literacy. Now this also, this doesn't mean that we're gonna ignore the other question words. So we're still gonna introduce and define what pop culture is. We're gonna define what critical literacy is. We're gonna explain why this is important. Why is it important to, to pursue critical literacy? Why is it important to pursue popular culture? We're gonna go into all the theoretical aspects that relate to the how, but we're choosing to separate the main sections into how in this example. Now we could easily make the same decision based on why. If you feel that your uh, organizational uh, your organizational pattern at the level of the thesis statement or the way that you're dividing up the main sections, it makes more sense to divide that up into answering why, that's fine. But we're still going to talk about what it is and how it uh, comes about. This is why I'm suggesting to everyone to avoid the general to the specific organizational pattern at the level of the thesis statement. This is why I'm generally suggesting against organizing your main sections from the theoretical to the practical. Why? Because I'd rather focus more on the central question the how or the why that is the basis of your study. Because when you go to start to collect your data and you're getting information to find out, okay, how does this happen? Or why does this happen? You're, you're asking yourself these questions and you're getting these answers. You need to be able to compare your answers with the answers from the literature. Do your answers align? Do you come up with the same uh, results and the same implications of from other researchers, or is it different? And it really doesn't matter if it's the same or not. It's your ability to explain yourself and compare your findings with those from outside sources. So if you are choosing a, an organizational pattern from the general to the specific or the theoretical to the practical, you're limiting the amount of discussion that you can have um, regarding the how and the why typically. Why? Because usually where the discussion comes up between discussing how and why something happens doesn't usually occur until you get into the practical aspect, right? Like how does this happen? What does it look like? What are some examples? And then, um, you know, and then why is that, right? I'm suggesting here a point by point organizational pattern that talks about the how and the why and the what and the when and the where, all integrated within each of those points. And those points that you define in your theory, those are gonna be directly related, again, to what you look for when you collect your own data. So this is why I'm discussing at this point in the process, this transitional paragraph. Maybe you're not ready yet to fully develop this, but at least copy and paste your research questions over and just place them just above the method section for now so that as you develop your literature review, you're connecting your thesis statement with the main sections, and then you're asking yourself, okay, what is the main question here? There might be cases where you have a how research question and a why research question, but you still would need to define which of those two makes the best sense in terms of organizing your main sections. All right, so I, I want to stress the importance of, of involving all of the question words, not neglecting any, right, that we need to, but we need to select one question word that is most relevant for our, our literature review. You know, you may be thinking, why just those two uh, question words? You could include uh, other question words like when, I'm thinking in the case of those who are studying um, something related to L1, L2, like the, the use of L1, L2. You could, you could uh, easily divide up your sections into 
when it's common that educators or English teachers code switch. And you could easily develop sections around, well, this is when it happens and develop the what, the how, the why, the when, the where. Another section, this is when it happens. This is another time when it happens and talk about the what, the how, the when, the why, the where, and so on. Okay, so uh, I'm not against using other question words to divide up the, the main sections, but some question words are better than others. Let's take the example of the question word, what? Now, you might have some questions, some more specific questions that involve what? Like in this case, what are the benefits and what are the beliefs? Certainly, these can be questions that relate to your study and, and questions that will be addressed. But notice that if you, you only talk about what, if you only ask the question what, and you try to uh, organize your main sections in terms of what, what beliefs, what benefits, it can be a little bit more challenging to bring in the other question words when we're typically only asking what. If you go and if you have a question word, if your research question only deals with what, then when you start to collect your data, you're not going to be looking for any questions related to how or why. When you ask a what question, you're limiting yourself to the other types of questions. It's only describing what. It's basically saying, this is a belief, th these are benefits. But if you ask how or why, notice that you still have to ask what. What is a prerequisite for understanding how? What is a prerequisite for understanding why something happens? Right. So for me, why and how are really the highest level of uh, critical thinking uh, questions that really require us to understand all of the other question words, like what, and perhaps even when, and with whom, and so on. How many, right, which are all, you know, kind of closed questions by themselves, in and of themselves, but this is something we can talk about more specifically if we need to in terms of your own research, if it helps to look at specific examples in your own, um, in your own context. But I wanted to present these ideas to you at this point. Um, spend some time thinking about the organization. I'm, I'm really looking at the main sections first, how you're coming up with your level two and level three headings. Remember, level two heading indicates the main sections of your literature review, and a level three heading are going to be those subheadings or subtopics that are falling in between the main sections of your theory. I hope this helps, guys. If you have any questions, continue sending me messages via chat. And certainly these are topics we can discuss in our thesis and our tutoring sessions. If you have concerns that require us to have a discussion, or if you think that that's necessary, then let me know when you're available. We can schedule that uh, those sessions as well. So I hope this clarifies a little bit uh, the, the relationship between the research questions, the thesis statement, and how your uh, dividing up the main sections of your literature review.